uh, I'm giving a talk. Uh, it's an introduction into PHP extensions. Um, when I was yesterday talking to somebody, they thought I was going to show you lots of different PHP extensions, which is not the case. I'm going to talk a, lo a little bit about um, why, you what, why you might want to write an extension and then show a little bit on how you actually end up doing this. And a little bit about myself, I'm Derek. Uh, hello, good morning. Good morning. There you go, just making sure you're all awake. Uh, at, I, I work for MongoDB on the PHP driver for MongoDB. Uh, as Matt already said, I wrote Xdebug, PHP's daytime support, and a whole bunch of other things. I like maps, I like beer, I like whiskey. Um, I don't think I have any examples of either of those in my slides, as I usually have. Um, if there's any questions, we'll keep those to the end, because otherwise you need to keep turning off the lights and stuff like that. Uh, and I'm more than happy to hear your later questions and comments either on Twitter or by email um, or on joined in, of course. But I'll show the, the, all the contact details on the last slide. All right, so what are we going to talk about this morning? Well, we're going to have a look at what are extensions, why would you want to write one, and how do you write an extension? Now, the last point really needs about a week's time. I have 50 minutes, so don't expect that you'll be a fully fledged PHP extension developer by the end of this presentation. It's just not enough time for this to do this in 50 minutes or even a day, really. All right, so what are extensions? Well, extensions in PHP bring you additional functions and classes. So if you just look at PHP raw, the only thing it really implements is the syntax. It won't have thing functions like strln or any of the array functions that all implement as extensions. Now, all those extensions are written in C. Some of them, like, for example, the date-time extension or the standard extension, which implements all the array functions and string functions, stuff like that, they are actually part of PHP and are very difficult to separate from it. But technically, they are developed as a extension. And some people have tried in the past, when they wanted to run PHP on embedded systems, actually not load those by making things to the code. So <coughs> these are, although these are extensions, there's, of course, other extensions that you load, uh, that you sometimes load into PHP. Um, it's very common for Linux distributions that all the extra extensions that aren't part of the PHP core, for example, you, you load um, through shared objects. Those are extensions that are compiled separately from PHP but loaded into the same process to your extension equals lines in PHP I and I. Um, some of them are bundled with PHP. You have, for example, MySQL I is bundled with PHP. Uh, some are distributed to PECL, which is the PHP extension code library. That is a backronym. I mean, I don't. Sure, originally meant something else, but we'll just make some things up as we go, right? As for example, like the MongoDB extension, you can install by, by using Peckle install extension name. And there's also a whole bunch of extensions that are not available through Peckle, so you need to go find them on the internet, on clone GitHub repositories and whatever things people come up with sometimes. So there's different classes of extensions, different ways of distributing them, um, and but are all written in C with a very odd exception of an extension written in C++ here and there. All right, so why would you want to write one? Right? I mean, it's a lot harder to write C code than it is to write PHP code, especially when you need to think about debugging as well as uh, memory management and stuff like that. So when, when starting to think, why would I want to write an extension? Well, there's a few reasons why you might want to do that. So the first one is if you want to wrap an existing library. Um, not everything can actually be implemented in PHP Go directly, or sometimes for speed. So let's have a look at each of these categories. So the first one is the, the wrapping libraries one, right? So most database drivers, there's always a, a, a library, a, a system level library available that implements all the complicated connection management, uh, query translation, and stuff like that. So uh, for MongoDB, that's libmongoc. For MySQL, that's libmysql, as an example here. Uh, image processing libraries, much more easy to do because these libraries already exist. Rewriting them in, in PHP is a bit silly, although some people do that. Um, you can. You can write 3D rendering ray traces in PHP if you really want to do that. Uh, it's not going to be very fast, but you can. Um, so yeah, uh, just wrapping these libraries, that is one of, the, one of the use cases. And the one that most people actually tend to do, because they already have some functionality they now want to make available in PHP. And writing this very thin layer in between a library and PHP isn't actually that difficult to do. So the other thing is there's some, not everything is possible doing in userland. And with userland, I mean writing things in PHP itself, like writing PHP scripts. 
So if you need to persist data in between requests, you can't really do that in PHP userland. Uh, you can, of course, store things in shared memory, like PHP data structure and stuff like that, but you cannot do that for connections, C, C or system level connections to your database, for example. You can't really model those in PHP userland, so if you want to have persistent connections, you're required to do that in extensions. And in extension, there's different ways and tricks of how you can do uh, these, these persistent connections. And then, of course, there's a whole bunch of extensions that need to look so deep into PHP internals that, uh, yeah, you just can't do that in PHP userland. So the things as, as VLD, which is a tool to, to, to see what goes on in the hood in PHP, or Xdebug, um, the things that Xdebug do, does, you can definitely not do in PHP userland. And the same thing with PHP opcache, right? Uh, it is a, it's a low-level system thing kind of stuff that, that stores things in shared memory for you, and that's something you can't do in PHP either. Um, so those things you have to write an extension for. And then the third one is speed. I mean, PHP is a very fast language, especially in PHP 7. But C is still going to be faster, and there's no way around it, right? So, uh, th which means that algorithmic implementations in C often outperform code in PHP. That should be, well, it should be quite obvious, really, right? All right, so... <coughs> On the other side, why do you not want to implement something in extension? I think my abstract at some point said, and I will tell you why not to implement all of, all of Symfony in extension, right? Um, because it takes a lot more time to write extensions than it takes to write PHP code. Um, C is a harder language. Uh, you need to deal with pointers. You need to deal with memory management. You need to make sure you clean up your memory, that you don't reuse memory that you have already freed. None of those problems exist in PHP. Uh, the same, on the same side, debugging things in C extensions is, is harder than doing that in PHP as well. I mean, the debugging tools are just as good, but it's because the whole concept is more complex. The debugging is more complex as well. And because of that, the maintenance, it takes a lot more time to make the maintain those extensions, right? So it makes sense that if you have something in a big PHP framework, or let me take an example that actually is a real example, the, the Twig templating language. Uh, when this was written, well, seven, eight years ago, might be a bit old, uh, out on the time frame, but about seven, eight years ago, is um, the people who wrote the Fabian Potentier, I think, he reached out to me and said, well, we, we've used profilers and figured out everything, but there's this one function. This one function that is just really slow and we can't optimize this. And he was asked, well, can you see whether writing an extension for this actually makes sense? So there's now a Twig C extension that implements just this one single function because that's the only thing that made sense to write in, P in, in C code, because it was this one thing that couldn't be optimized in PHP anymore, but it still was taking a lot of time. So doing that in C makes a lot of sense. And of course, if you use Twig, you can now choose to install this extension or, you can't or choose not to install it. So implementing very specific parts of an application or framework makes a lot of sense sometimes. Doing all of Symfony or all of Twig is going to take you years and years and years, and you're not going to be very happy afterwards. I can tell, I've tried. All right, so let's talk about Belgium. Uh, oh, the maps came back after, I had forgotten. So Belgium, right, if you want to draw the outline of Belgium, you have quite a lot of lines here, right? Of course, if you zoom out, you don't really care about all the weird squiggly lines of border between the Netherlands and Belgium, for example, at the top. So when you zoom out, drawing the outline, the border outline of Belgium, it's taking a lot of time, right? Especially if you want to do it for all the countries in the world. I mean, the browser is going to take a lot of time drawing all those things with, through JavaScript lines and Canvas stuff and whatever. So having an algorithm that optimizes the outline of polygons actually makes a lot of sense. You need to do something like that, uh, otherwise you just won't be able to show things in the browser anymore. So this is actually a thing I was looking at uh, for some hobby project at some point. And I realized, well, I need to do this better. I mean, I need to simplify those lines in order to be able to draw all the things I want on the map. All right, so, um, yeah, when you get to Belgium Polygon, I mean, I can't scroll down, I won't, but uh, it's a very, very long list of coordinates, right? It's like 1,200 lines or something like that. And there's, of course, algorithms to simplify these polygons into something. So uh, it's called a Rama Douglas Pucker, if that's how you pronounce that, I don't know. Yeah, something like that, which is an al a recursive algorithm that simplifies polygons by looking at the full line determining like an, something they call an epsilon, which is the, well, it's difficult to see in the contrast here, but it's the, how do you say that, the, the blue, light blue 
box it draws around the lines uh, in the algorithm. So that is the epsilon. The way how this works, if you look at the line, you draw the line between the outside points, you draw the epsilon box around it, and all the points that fall out of the box are considered to stay in the, in the end result of the, uh, of the algorithm. So this is a recursive algorithm and then comes up with a simplified polygon. Now, if I did it for Belgium, a uh, hundred times with an epsilon of 0 0.01, which is only a small, uh, small simplification. Doing that in the PHP function takes about 45 seconds. Doing this in C, it took me a third of a second, which is a whole lot faster, right? So we're going warp speeds. Need to get the geek jokes in somehow. Um, so yes, it is so much faster, right? And because this is an, an algorithmically complex thing to run, Implementing these little things in C makes a lot of sense. So let's have a look at how we're actually doing that. So what makes up an extension in PHP? Now, this is a, mostly it is conventions. Not all the extensions follow all of these things exactly, but most, of ex most extensions will do. So there is a config M4 and a config W32 file. These are the files that provide build instructions to PHP's build system. M4 is a really ridiculously annoying macro language. Um, we, we've just gone through re-implementing this for the MongoDB driver. And because we have so many libraries that we need to depend on, doing that is not easy. It is a really, really gross language to use. <coughs> Config.w32, which is its Windows equivalent, is all done in JavaScript-ish, which is a lot easier. But then on Windows, you don't really need to do much configuration because you can assume things being there a lot more than on a Linux or Unix-based system, right? Because config M4 is for every Unix you can think of, MX, whereas the W32 is just for Windows, making that a lot easier. All right, so uh, we'll look at all those files in a moment. Uh, you have a php underscore extension name dot h file, which is the head of files and provides some glue, so some help to PHP to be able to load things and stuff like that. You have extension name.c, which implements um, the extension definition, functional implementation, it's basically your implementation. You can choose to have, of course, multiple files. So if you have an algorithm already has a C function, you often have separate function to implement specific things. If you get a more complex extension, uh, for example, for MongoDB, we'll have a C file for every class that we have in the extension, just to make it more manageable. Uh, uh, Xdebug has like 40 or 50 different files there. Um, but many, many extensions just have this extension.c file, this php underscore extension.h file, the config m4 file. And then, of course, it is a good thing to write tests for extensions, right? And tests are written in a .phpt format, uh, which is a very simple way of um, providing the, f the PHP script to run and then uh, comparing that to the output that you expect. Again, I'll show you that in a moment. All right, so the smallest extension you can probably get away with is about this size. I know you can't read this. I can't read it on the slide either. But it is about, what is it, 100 lines of code in total. And this is the most minimal extension that, sh that implements a function that is called Hello World and shows Hello World on the screen. I mean, you need to start with something, right? Um, so let, let's have a look at all of those files that make up this stuff. So the first thing to look at, and, beca and because this is such a simple extension that we're going to look at, is all very small. So this config m4 file, they often start with like a little comment saying, this is the config m4 file for the extension with the extension name. In this case, the name of the extension is called geospatial, which is an actual extension that I've written that implements this algorithm and a whole bunch of other things, and uh, other people have contributed to this extension as well. It implements a lot of geospatial-related algorithms, like coordinate transversions, uh, polygon simplification, as I'm looking at here now, and a whole bunch of other things. <coughs> so the next few lines you get in the config and for file is uh, you need to define your configure option flags. So in this case, we're saying PHP arg enable geospatial, the name of your extension. Then you get a description. Uh, this is a description that shows when you would configure the extension by typing uh, dot slash configure on the command line. It will then check whether this argument has been passed, show you the whether to enable geospatial support in its output, and if you would do configure dash dash help, you'll get the enable geospatial and enable geospatial support. That is what those two lines really do. It is convention that enable is used for extensions that do not depend on external libraries. 
and it is convention to use PHP in our arc with WITH for extensions that depend on extra on the libraries. Why did the convention exist? I don't know, but that's just how it is. Um, so yeah, and this is this M4 kind of language macro stuff. And then after all your options, all your libraries have been checked, for example, then you need to tell PHP build system to do a few things as well. So the build instructions here say, well, if we had passed in the flag and it isn't no, because you can do enable geospatial equals no, why you would want to do that? I don't know, but you can. Um, and you need to test for that. I mean, this does not make a lot of sense to do for standalone extensions, but it makes a lot of sense if you have extensions that are part of the PHP core, right? And then you might want to choose whether you enable something or not. This being an external extension, not enabling is silly because why would you bother trying to compile it in the first place anyway? So, but yeah, it's convention, it needs to be there. And then with the PHP new extension macro, you define, well, my, the name of my extension is geospatial. I have the following C files that you need to compile. You have a comma, and then you have the dollar $x shared, which you just need to do. I can't explain you why either, so, but it needs to be there, otherwise it doesn't work. Yeah, the magic of M4, that's all I'm saying. All right, the W32 file is very simple, very similar, um, but it's done in JavaScript. Uh, there's arc enable and CPHP arc enable. The name is the same. Uh, you need to specify the default argument here in this case, or the reverse negative, whatever. Um, the, the no is there. I don't know exactly why, to be honest. Um, and instead of PHP new extension, you just use extension because this is a build system being written after PHP's build system has been rewritten a few times. So in PHP, you have PHP new extension, which is, of course, a newer version of PHP extension. But nobody uses the old one anymore. And again, you have to specify the C files, and you don't have to do the silly X shared stuff because this is a lot more saner to use, to be honest. All right, so I've shown you the config and four file, but of course, we haven't really spoken about how you compile uh, external extensions. There's usually three steps. If you use Peckle install extension name, it will run those steps for you, so you don't have to think about it. But if you would clone an extension from Git, for example, you need to run PHP ICE. PHP ICE is a tool that comes with the PHP dev package most of the time, uh, which is a little script that pre prepares uh, PHP's build system with the information in the extension. So it will look at the config and for file, and if there's other files, it will do things with that just to prepare them so that when you then run configure, it goes through the script and does things with it. So PHP ICE is equivalent to, if you've ever compiled PHP itself, if you do dot slash build conf, that is what PHP ICE is for, for extensions. And it, it creates this configure script that you then need to run to check all the things that are available in the system or not, check for your, your arguments, and then that creates a make file. And a make file can then be run by make to build the extension. So those three steps are there. And you need all the time. What I do for most of my extension, I actually create a little script, which is called rebuild.sh, which is all of these steps for me and a few other things. So it sets some compiler flags that I like using for, uh, for giving me more warnings and errors when developing extensions. So yeah, it, it would be nice that if PHP ICE would have this rebuild thing in there or something like that. I don't know, makes sense. All right, so let's look at the, the other files that we have. So the header file, uh, defines a few things about your extension. Um, they always start with this guard. It's a thing in C that makes sure that if you end up including a header file multiple times, you don't actually do what uh, you don't actually include what is in the header file multiple times. Because if you end up defining things in a header file, defining them twice, you get a you get an error or a warning out of there. So the first two lines here, the if not def if not defined PHP underscore geospatial dot h so basically, everything in the whole file gets excluded if PHP geospatial.h is already defined. And then the next line defines it, making sure that you can really, uh, it really only does the instructions in this file at maximum once. Um, then you have a version string. It is also a convention that you use PHP underscore extension name underscore version. If you don't do that, uh, uh, packaging tools will actually warn about that. Um, you get your model definition. That is something that PHP requires 
to be able to load a shared extension um, that needs to be there. It needs to be the exact same format with the exact same names. The word geospatial and geospatial model entry needs to match the name of your extension, needs to match the name of your shared object. Um, then often you get some module initializer declarations. These are definitions for PHP M init, which stands for module init, which is a function that gets run uh, when, a, when an extension gets loaded. You can do initialization things in there, for example. M info is the function that's going to be called when you do PHP info. So an extension can define their own table of information to show in there. Uh, as you can see, if, if you know C well enough, they are just forward declarations. They don't actually implement anything in a header file. In, in C, you don't implement anything in a header file. And then you have uh, some other forward declarations, uh, basically defining all the functions that you have in your extension. In this case, we have RDP underscore simplify, which is the name of the function we're going to have a look at as implementing. Make sense? Yeah? Nobody's fallen asleep yet? I hear no snoring. That's always good. All right, so um, now we have done the header file. The main thing is, of course, all happens in the C file. And in the C file, they usually follow the same order of things, but it isn't strictly necessary. It is a bit of a preference where you put all the, all the, the information to tell the extension what the name of functions are and where to find the implementation at the bottom. Not everybody does that. Some people put it at the top. Uh, what can I say? Uh, it's preference. But what you always have at the top is your header inclusions. The, these headers define things uh, of the PHP API and almost all of the time, you need php.h included, because without it, you won't be able to get anything done. PHP INI, you need to include if you have in a, uh, like PHP INI settings. If you have a mInfo function to get things into uh, PHP info output, you need to include xstandard info.h. Uh, you also always include the header file for your extension, of course. And then if you make use of exceptions, um, normal exceptions are zen slash exceptions. Uh, if you use SPL exceptions, it's X SPL, SPL underscore exceptions. And then for many other things that you might use from the PHP API, you need to have a specific header include file. For array functions, for string functions, they're all different files that you need to include. And it depends, of course, what you make use of in a PHP API, which ones uh, you include here. All right, after the header files, you get argument information definitions. D this is information that you, provide that you will see when you use reflection. Um, and it also gets used for argument parsing. Argument parsing will get back to in a moment. So p zend begin arg info x. Uh, you give a name. The name is usually function name and then underscore args. Again, convention. Uh, then you get uh, a few flags in there. The last one being the most important, saying this is the amount of arguments that are required to be passed into this function. So this one says it has two arguments and both are required uh, to be passed in. And then you define the names of these, uh, of the arguments. And this is only the names that show up when you use reflection. Nothing else is really done with that. If you have arrays or objects, there's different version. There's zend arc info array and zend arc info object. So you get to define a class name. Which, and the names of the classes are actually being checked when you parsing arguments. So it does, a, it does do some things with argument parsing, but not everything that you might want to do. And then you need to define a list of functions. And a list of functions is what, uh, what I say is what it is. It's a list of functions. And there is a macro called php underscore fe, which stands for php function entry. You link the name. Um, in this case, the name of the function that we are implementing, rdp underscore simplify, is also going to be the name of the implementation file. Sorry, not the name of the implementation function in the same C file. Sometimes you might want to alias them. Uh, there's macros for that. If you want to do methods defined on classes, that's p there's php underscore me, there's m alias, there's a whole bunch of these different macros doing slightly different things. Gets more complicated if you want to do namespaces again, uh, but there's a whole bunch of these. In this case, we're keeping it simple, so we just use php fe as php function entry. And now we still haven't gotten to actually implementing anything, and we won't be there for a moment. So, in order for PHP to know where all your implementations live, you need to have this module extension definition. 
This defines the version number, the name, uh, which initialization and destruction methods are being used. So we have mInit here and mInfo here. Uh, the geospatial version you need to do. I don't know why I still have the if Zen module API number is larger than the number, because this is stuff that has been added to PHP a API. As you can see on the number, in 2001. So um, probably not necessary to keep that anymore, because there's no way this extension will compile with PHP 4. I can uh, guarantee you that. That won't work. <laughs> All right. And then the last bit, the last few lines are actually necessary uh, for, uh, to make sure that uh, PHP can find the, the, the function definitions when it loads things into, um, uh, into PHP itself. And this is done with a guard. It's, it's the compiled D DL ge geospatial. So it would only define its function um, when it's being loaded as a shared object. Because when, it's built, when you choose to compile an extension with PHP's normal build system, it, you can't define this method because then things don't work. So that's why there's a guard around it. All right. And then you get some auxiliary in it and info section. So M in it uh, is a place where you can, for example, register constants. If you have to initialize a library that you make use of, goes into M in it as well. M in it is being run once per, per process. So once PHP FPM or PHP CLI starts up, it will call this M in it function once. Sometimes it is necessary to initialization per request. For that, you have R in it. Uh, in R in it, you can do a little bit more. You can allocate uh, a few things that you can't do in M in it. Uh, and that tends to be you, you allocate things in there, you initialize things in there for, for just a single request. And you're going to have, in most cases, an R shutdown, which is the opposite of the initialization, because if you initialize things, it is very likely that you might have to uninitialize things as well. In this case, I don't have an, uh, an M shutdown because the registration of a constant you don't have to undo when PHP exits because it's exiting anyway. So what's, what is the point there, right? Um, and then you have uh, mInfo, which is kind of funny because you use C functions to build HTML tables. Uh, yeah, there's no templating or anything in there really. Uh, it's kind of it's kind of quirky, but it works. And it is uh, it's recommended that you show at least the name of your extension in there and then which version it is, so that you, when you see PHP info, you can see which version of the extension is run, which is my, my only row of information, basically, in it. All right, so, so far, what we have seen is the implementation is all boilerplate. Every extension needs all of this, and it isn't particularly interesting to look at and write on. What the interesting things are is, of course, the function itself, right? This is where you do all the useful works. So there's usually four stages for every function that you, use, uh, that you implement. You need to look at all the arguments that are being passed in from PHP scripts, user land kind of things. Libraries often need this information in a slightly different format. So you need to convert the data that comes into PHP into the right format. Usually different stru C data structures and things like that. Uh, I'll show you in a moment. Then you need to run the stuff that the library implements. And then from that, you need to convert that to the right data structure so that you can return it back to the user that calls the PHP function. Anybody wants to guess what this function is? No? No physics geeks here? Okay. You, you will have to look this up later. Homework, that's why I call it. All right, so uh, parsing the, 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 the input parameters. So I will slowly go through a whole implementation of a single function now. And I'm doing this in sections. Um, and as I said, the first one is parsing input par parameters. So in PHP, every bit of data that is used is usually something we call a Z file, or if you're an American, a Z file. Uh, I prefer Z file. A Z file is a data structure that wraps around a value as well as a type. Because PHP is a weekly type language, PHP for every variable needs to keep the type as well as a value in order to do information things with it later, right? So that is what a Z file is. Um, a double is a C, C way of calling a floating point number. So you can also use float, but it has less preci precision. Uh, in PHP, your floating point is always a double. So because it's always a double in C, you need to use a double here. So for parsing 
input parameters, there's a PHP API function called Zen parse parameters, which accepts a bunch of arguments here. So it first has Zenum arg, which is a macro that tells you how many arguments are being passed in. Uh, in this case, we, uh, because we, we remember in the arg info, we define that it has to be two, so that will always be two, or nothing. Nothing if, because the, extent, the, the function won't get called. Uh, the TSRM LSCC thing I'm going to skip over because in PHP 7 that's no longer necessary. Uh, and then the argument that you then get is in the one that double quotes, the one that says ZD, is your, is your definition of what types of arguments are being passed in. And depending on the letter, you get as m subsequent arguments to then parse parameters. Um, you need to provide a definition or a reference to the C data type that you have defined beforehand. So the letter Z means I'm going to see a Z vol. Uh, we don't really know what kind of data this is, and we're going to have to look at later, but it's the right type and do something with it. Epsilon uh, is this like this, or this is argument to the function that defines its smoothness, basically. This is a double, and a double we specify with the letter D. If you get your letters with your data types wrong, it will crash. So you need to get it right. Luckily, there's a nice documentation file. One of the few things that is actually documented well in the PHP API, to be honest, uh, which links your letters with your da C data types that you need. So then para parse parameters requires a format letter every type. They're matched with a C type. And also, the, the the data that you get in here gets freed up at the end of calling the function, which is important if you have things like a string in C, you are not allowed to free that string. Because if you free that string, PHP tries to do that for you again, and it's already freed, and then it crashes. Basically, everything you do wrong crashes. So you need to be very careful with that. All right, so yeah, as I said, although we get in the first argument as a Z file, we still want this to be an array. Now, there is a specific letter for an array. Why I haven't used that, I can't quite tell you. Um, I think with the intention of later also supporting objects in there, and there is, um, well, there wasn't, when I wrote this extension, a letter that would accept both an array or an object at the same time. That exists now, so. It's a little bit old code sometimes. But what we can do with the, what I've done in the last three lines of the implementation here, the Z underscore type, returns the type of the z vari variable. And then you can compare that with is underscore data type, in this case, an array. Well, so what I'm saying here, if points array is not an array, I'm going to return from the function. So returning from a function in, in PHP C implementation stuff and means you, the function returns null. Um, the way how you return variables from PHP implement from functions like we've implementing here is not by using return in C, which is kind of weird, but that's how it is. All right, so what is the Z file thing? I've already touched on that a little bit. So it is a PHP representation of a value. Uh, the implementation of that has changed significantly between PHP 4, PHP 5, and PHP 7, but most of that has been abstracted for you. You don't have to deal with very much. So as I said, it contains a type, which you can access through Z type P. And you can also access the, var uh, the value in there by using Z underscore short name for data type, val underscore P. So there is rval for getting the array information out of there. There is bval for the Boolean value. There's lval for an integer number. There's dval for a double. There's strval for a string. Uh, there's strlen for the length of a string, and so on and so on. Yeah, I know those acronyms are very interesting to pronounce. Uh, but th those all exist. And if you don't know beforehand what the data type is, you really need to check it with Z type P before you access information. Because if you would try to access the array information in a variable, but it's actually a double, it's going to crash. As I said, everything is going to crash if you do it wrong or the, the, the chance of things crashing increases, let me put it that way. So as I said, there's a whole bunch of these letters. Um, this is not an exhaustive list because it would fit on the slide. But there are the important ones, A for array, B for Boolean, 
if you want to accept objects, you can use an uppercase O. And unlike a normal argument, it, exactly, it, ex it requires two extra arguments to send parse parameters. So the first one is going to be a Z file, which is going to be handled to your object. And then the second one is something called a Zend class entry, which basically is the definition of your class. The most important thing in this case in there, it is going to contain the name of the class. So with the uppercase O, you can actually instruct Zend parse parameters to already check whether a object that you pass in is, is of the correct class. And if it isn't, you get your standard PHP well, argument, arguments wrong error back. So uh, Zend parse parameters actually does quite a lot of these things for you so that you don't have to check the right types and stuff like that. All right, um, as I said, after accepting the arguments, we now need to convert it to something that the library can do something with. So what I've done, I've implemented this RDP simplify function as a C function, sort of in an external file to simulate this is actually a library. It isn't really the case because it's built with the extension, but it illustrates the example better. And in there, I have a implemented function which is called geo hash table to array which converts my Z file in points array to a data structure that my C implementation of the RDP simplify function understands. And it looks something like this. Uh, I just want to show you this. I don't want to go fully over this because it's going to depend very much on things. But there's interesting things though in there, like PHP has specific macros, uh, like Zend hash for each val to iterate over an array for you. Which, Im which works very similar as a for each in PHP itself. So there's for each val that will only do you the value. There's also for each index val or IDX val if you want to get both the numerical index as well as the value. Um, and there's also, of course, one for having associative arrays and stuff like that. There, there are a new addition in PHP 7 that makes doing these kinds of loops very much easier than a previous iteration of it. So basically what I'm doing here with the for each val, I'm looping over the array and each of the elements in the array is a coordinate pair, it's a longitude latitude pair. And that's what I'm parsing with parse point pair. I'm parsing this element, it will also check for the correct types and then return the, int the information in long and lats, uh, all that to a C-based array, which is the TMP variable in here. Uh, I set the status to one for each of those points and the status one for the algorithm means this is a point we're going to keep. So once the algorithm runs, it will set for some point the status to zero. Uh, I'll get to that in a moment. Also important, because we created a data structure, if something goes wrong, we need to free the data structure. If you don't free the data structure, you got something called a mem leak. Uh, and that is okay once, but not if this runs uh, 100,000 times, and then your PHP process runs out of memory, which is it likely means it's going to crash. All right, so the main thing is, of course, we're running the algorithm. Now, I'm, not, I'm going to show you a little bit the, how close the C implementation of RDP Simplify would be to the PHP function. So that's the next few slides, okay. So we have RDP and PHP. Uh, it is kind of complex, but it, it, I, I know there's like a few more lines. It doesn't fit on the slide, it doesn't matter. But just compare that to, this, to the Inf the one in C, right? Can you see what how close they are? In PHP, you, of course, you don't have to define the data types for first point, last point, and index. In C, you see, well, you need to define those as C data types because in C you need to declare variables. If you look at the end minus start being smaller than two, in PHP, you have dollar signs in front of the end and the start, right? It's very quite close. Doing like algorithm kind of things in C and PHP, isn't very far away from each other. The problems are going to be mostly memory management that you need to take care of. That is probably one of the bigger things that is different between writing something in C than it is in PHP. Anyway, I won't go through the whole algorithm. Uh, I'll, I have the slides put online already, so you can go through it later or find the extension itself and see what all the kinds of cool things you've implemented in there. All right, so I've said so. Well, we parse the argument implements, we convert them to something that the library uses, we execute the library function, and then of course we need to return the information back to the person that called the function, or the, the user in this case. So in this case what we're doing is we need to tell that a return value is going to be an array. And there is a magic, magic, no, my laser pointer died, is a magic variable 
retur called return underscore value that you do not declare yourself. If you see the, the start of an implementation, in this case, the top line of my example here says PHP underscore function, which is a macro. It is a macro that does do a few extra things with the function name, and one of the things is make sure that you get those magic variables like return value, or it provides the information that uh, Zen parse parameters uses. Uh, you don't need to do anything about it yourself, uh, but it is a variable that, of course, you use for returning an information back to the users. And because this is an array, we need to call array init on it. Uh, what you should not do is allocate this by, by, by allocating a Z file for it, because it's already allocated for you. And if you do that, it's likely that things will crash. I know from experience in this case. I, I know, I keep saying that a lot. In any case, what the library turns is a data structure that is stored in points. It's the same array that we pass into the library function, but now it has modified the status flag for each of those points. So what we're now doing is we're looping over this array, which we know how many elements it has, because that's part of the data structure in, in count. For each of those pairs, what we create is we create a array, we do use array in it to create, a, to not allocate, to create in an already uh, available variable called zval pair, second line of the, the, the example, we, we tell PHP to turn that into an array variable so that we can add elements to it. So the, the, the four lines in the middle basically creates an array, then adds the two uh, coordinates, so the latitude and longitude, which are done in X and Y in this case, and then it adds the newly created structure with the coordinate pair in it to the array in return value. So the odd index, sorry, odd next index Z file basically is PHP speak for odd a element to the end of the array. If you have an associative array, there's a different function for that. Uh, if you have something else than a Z file, if you have a double, there's odd index, odd next index double, and so on and so on. If you already have a array key, there's a function called odd index z file, where you then have to specify the numerical key and so on and so on. So there's a whole bunch of these functions, depending on what sort of data type you add and whether you have a key already or not and stuff like that. And again, important to know that once we are done, by adding all these things to the return value, is to free your data structure. Because if you don't free the data structure that you've allocated, PHP won't do it for you. Um, and then you have a memory leak. And luckily, there's tools for that to, for you to find out those things exist. All right, and that's what we've done. Um, except that there's also different ways of returning information, right? I, I mentioned before that if you just call return with a semicolon, um, PHP ends up returning null to user land. And there's a different ways uh, how you can actually return information. Like what I've done here is you see I actually don't end up returning anything. Right? There's no return statement. But what I have done is I've done this array in it with return value. So I'm basically manipulating the already allocated return value with information that I want to do. Uh, if it's an array, there's no macros for this. If it's a sim simple values, there is something like that. So taking an example from the MongoDB driver, we want to make sure that the cursor is alive. So we use return bool. And what return bool does is add this information to underscore return value and then immediately return from the function which is not something you always want to do. Because, as I said, you need to clean up all your memory, allocated memory structures, uh, uh, the things you've allocated in memory you need to free. But if you use one of the return underscore macros, it would return immediately from the function without you having a chance to clean up. And for these situations, there is another set of macros, and they're called ratval underscore, and then exactly the same as before. So that you can then still clean up uh, the data structures that you've allocated. Uh, so yeah, so you can return immediately, or you can just set the return value. You can then later change the return value again as well if you want to do that. And I just have a, just a quick thing about PHP 5 versus PHP 7. As an extension developer, it is sometimes a little bit annoying that you have to take care of both of them. Of course, people writing extensions now, they're not going to have to take care about PHP 5 anymore, because none of you should be using this. Yeah, right? Just my PHP 7 spill. All right, so that's uh, returning. Uh, as I said before many times, memory management is very important. Um, 
PHP's uh, API has some uh, assistant things with you there. Uh, sometimes, if you have a Z file, you need to, uh, if you need to use a Z file that you have created in one function, used in other functions, you need to use the Z add ref that adds like a, an, a, a, it bumps a flag in the Z file to make sure that if PHP wants to destruct it, it only lowers down the counter and it would only end up freeing it if the counter hits zero. So everything gets allocated with the counter of one. If you use odd ref, it bumps that to two. Then when the function ends and parse parameters functionality decreases the number, it doesn't, as long as it doesn't get returned to zero, it, um, it won't free it. So that's to keep things alive and safe in the same request. Of course, if you do that at one point, at some other point, you're going to have to decrease the number, otherwise you get a memory leak, which is not cool. Uh, and un annoyingly, that is not called that del ref. Why? PHP. Where can I see? All right, so, and then the last thing, of course, you need to write tests, right? And the tests go in a test directory there in a PHP T format, and you run them with make test. A simple test file is not much more than a simple file with few sections in there, so the sections that I've used in here are the ones in red, so test defines the name of your test, the one that shows up if you type make test. You have the file, that is a PHP script. That's what it is, it's no more, no less. And then the expect section is what you expect this PHP script to output to standard output. There's no such thing as, as you have assertions like you have in PHP unit, for example. It is very simple comparison the output of a script to what it does. And this is something sometimes important because, of course, things written in C uh, can crash sometimes. And if all of this would run in the same request, if one test would fail or crash, then it would stop running all of the tests. So what make test actually does, it spins up a PHP process for every test. And by doing that, having to load things like PHP unit in there for every single process is going to make things so slow to make it unusable. Also, when PHP T was invented, PHP unit wasn't invented yet, so it's all technology here. Uh, there's a few other things you can do instead of expect F, you can also use X, sorry, in, instead of expect, you can also use expect, <laughs> sorry, that's difficult to pronounce, expect F, uh, where you can then use things like dollar $D to match a number, or dollar F, not dollar, sorry, percent S or percent D to match a string, to match a number, and all of the other data types. You can also put regular expressions in there if you want to do that. But in, yeah, it's just a simple PHP script. So they're very simple to write, which is a good thing, really. 